Welcome back to the Black Hole of Real Estate for Episode 4. You know, the question that we're being asked constantly right now is, uh, what's next in the real estate market? This is Ron Wysikarski, and today we're going to talk about just that. What happens next? We're going to have a market update for you. And we're going to talk about how pricing is going to be affected by COVID and what that means to you if you're thinking of moving over the next six months to a year. You know, so, so the first thing, you know, what's next? Uh, state of Florida has been on lockdown for about three weeks right now, give or take. And in the next week to 10 days, what we'll find is that people are going to slowly um, re-enter, you know, the workforce and the marketplace and shopping and the restrictions and whatnot. And the beaches will be a little more accessible. We do believe that some people are going to be a little reserved and not rush right back into things um, the way that they were and this new normal that we're in you know is not likely to ever go back to what we saw 30 days ago now what we do know is this there are a number of people that are getting a little bit antsy in the area they've been shut in for quite some time right now and in, in florida if you think about how we behave you know as a state when there's a hurricane usually a few days before we're preparing to buy things and to use the term hunker down you get your supplies and then a few days later, if it, you know, things are kind of back to normal, you're cleaning up if the hurricane has come nearby. And and if it lingers, well, maybe it's a week or so. Maybe you've lost electricity. Maybe you haven't. This has been different. And nobody's really gotten to that relief point. You know a hurricane's coming. It, it stays a while and it goes away and you get back to normal but reasonably fast unless there's a, you've been impacted greatly by the damage on a direct hit. Now, this has gone on for three weeks right now, and as, as a state, we've noticed that because people are so used to getting back to normal quicker, that they're not quite sure how to, how to treat this right now. The fact is, this is likely to linger for quite some time, and we're going to recover in different ways across different types of people. So if you've been shut in or at risk, you're likely to hold back and re-enter you know, society, if you will. A little bit slower paced and if you're in the process of getting back to work or you know trying to recover from this if you all have known your own business you may rush back in a little bit quicker and boy if you've been thinking of moving or have to move well you're probably ready to do that now on the good side if you're thinking of moving uh, there's houses out there that are ready to be bought and the interest rates are super low that might be one way to do it. And now that we've we've really been reintroduced on a much larger scale to technology has been available for quite some time with virtual showings and and the virtual open houses we've seen and, and sending out video and these are all things that will shape the market as we move forward. So what's next? I believe that pent up energy demand is going to spur us forward just a little bit. And I think that people get reacclimated to the thought of actually moving in a pandemic environment. Um, you know, as far as the market update, you know, we can tell you that in the month of March, compared to February, that, that home sales were up and the volume was up. So if you look at the February sales, 363 in the Daytona Beach area, compared to 484 in March. So we had a super strong start to the year. The first quarter was robust and things were running and gunning. The median sales price is held firm at 250. And if you look back to last year, well, in March of 2019, there was 446 sales, so 484 again this year. So that was up several percent as well. Last year, the median sales price was $231,000. I think this year at 250. So those are good marketable gains that we've seen month to month and year over year. Now, we also are experiencing sales in April closing. We had some concerns that people would back out or just not pursue the closing from the buyer and the seller side. And the fact is that most sales actually that were pending for April looks like they're going to close. Now, we're not sure what will happen in May and June. I believe that May certainly looks like it's going to be a little bit off because there was a lack of new listings and a lack of new pendings. June is kind of the wild card. We're not sure how quick we'll assimilate back into a more normalized uh, buying and selling market. We do know that traditionally this is a busier time of year. We'll just have to see how these things play out. 
Now, the inventory is always, always a big story for us the last few years. You know, last year in March, there was 2,599 homes available at some point during the month. This year is 300 less, it's 2,295. So it's about 11% fewer homes for someone to choose from that was in the market. That's gonna play a key role in the recovery, if you will, or the restarting of the real estate market. When you think about what it looks like going forward, what does this mean to you if someone is thinking of buying or selling? And, and what's going to happen with prices? Well, there is some concern out there that prices will drop through the floor. And, if, and believe me, we see investors coming out of the woodwork and looking at $300,000 properties and saying, hey, I'll give you one fifty dollars for it. You know, I don't see that happening. Maybe in 2008, during that time period, things like that occur. Oh, that was a totally different market situation. Those Properties really, as the economic crisis hit back in 2008, the properties were certainly under pricing pressure. But the difference was 12 years ago, there was a, more than double the inventory available and there was very little equity in the homes. And this is different. There is equity in the homes. There's not this pressure to sell the house or lose the house. It's to sell the house um, from a different set of pressures. And with the available inventory is super low right now. It's not shifting dramatically from the sellers to the buyers having control in this market. I think what you'll see is it's going to ebb and flow. So what I mean by that is as buyers begin to feel comfortable about making purchases on a grander scale, then that will use up some of the available inventory, which will make it even lower. That's probably going to cause some sellers to come off the fence and say, you know what, I'm probably a little more comfortable right now with somebody touring my home while I live here, even if I'm not in the home. They're probably a little less concerned about, you know, catching this virus. So I think the inventory will build up a little bit. At a time when interest rates remain low, and it sure seems like they're going to stay low, and increased historically activity occurs May, June, July we'll see that inventory wash away and more sellers come in. I think what you're gonna see is a bit of a sign curve where inventory gets a little bit lower and then buyers compete to get those homes. And then the inventory will inflate just a little bit and maybe it softens enough for the buyers to get perhaps a little bit of a deal. If there are a number of properties that sell just a little bit below where they were in the first quarter of 2020, and let's say it's a $250,000 home that sells for 235, that certainly could impact some of the appraisals going forward. Might make it a little bit harder to get those loans through for those that are financing. But they may just very well see enough people buying at the 245 and 250 or 255 range to balance those comps out. So right now, we are not looking at a situation where prices are dropping dramatically or that appraisal issues are going to come into the mix. Matter of fact, there's a lot of appraisers right now that are working with alternative measures that are likely to uh, keep the prices in, in line from where they were in the first quarter. Let's keep in mind that the market was really moving and improving in the first quarter of 2019. And that's why April turns out to be a pretty good closing month because the momentum from the early part of the year carried into April. The, the changes that we might see would likely occur in May and June. And if we are a little bit off in May, trending back in June and then perhaps July, the floodgates just might, you know, might open a little bit. There's absolutely some pent up energy in the market. The rates are low, it's still attractive. So it appears that the recovery when it comes, I, I hear the word tsunami of activity. I'm not sure if it's a tsunami, but I do believe a couple of months down the road, you'll see people back into a market a lot more like the one we were in pre COVID. There's a lot to happen between now and then. And if we find out there's a second wave of virus, that's going to impact things at a far different level. The only time to know what the market is doing is after it's occurred. So in May, in June, July, when we look back over our shoulder and say, hey, boy, you know what? Things were off in May. And then in June, they did this or that. We're only going to know after it happened. You're never going to be able to time the bottom or the peak of a market. But one might suggest 
that March, April might have been the peak of this real estate run up in the last 10 years, that things might be just a little bit off for a couple of months. And then we'll see what direction it heads next. Does it surge forward once again after a small layoff or does it trend downward? Are we off five or 8% over the next year? And how long does that last? Is it a six month or a 12 month trough or does it come back? You see, these are the questions we're not sure of. And, and I would suggest that nobody has that crystal ball that's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. But what does it mean to you as someone thinking of moving? Most people move into a home and the studies show they stay there eight to 10 years, but even five years. If you look back 12 years, it, this was a, a bottom of the market in 2008. It really got some legs in 2011 and 12, and then it surged forward after that for the last you know, five or so years. And if you're buying right now and locking in three and 4% interest rates over a 30 year term, you're, you're gonna have that property for a much longer time than this market, even if it dips will last. And I think that's the important thing that the only time that the price you pay matters is the day that you buy it and the day that you sell it and everything else in between is, is just a number in thin air. So if you want a place to live and you want it to call it your own and you want to lock into a historically, you know, continued historically low interest rates, you're probably safe to make a purchase in this time and that the curve will actually come back up soon enough. I can personally think of a home we bought in 2005 and the market absolutely tanked in a couple of years and the property was maybe worth half what we paid for. And it took seven, eight years to get back to about the neutral place to where we bought it. But even in that time, we eventually, even though we rode that house all the way down to the bottom and it was painful, it was our home. It was the place we lived in. So by the time we were ready to move to the next place, the market had you know, fortunately corrected itself and we didn't take that big burn. Now, if we had to sell, during that 2008, 2009 time, that would have been brutally painful. But if we bought a different home during that time, that other home would have also seen the run up that the first home had. So I think the only time that you might lose out in a market like that is if you sell in a painful time period and you're not bought back in. These are great questions. I, I think for every person you talk to, there's gonna be a different opinion out there right now. If I had to button up really fast, I would just say that I believe that April is going to look pretty good on paper. May will be just a little bit off. June is a bit of an unknown, and I think by July we might actually see some more normalized activity, or I could just be way off. Um, but that's what it looks like from here. So um, thanks for tuning in to episode four, and we look forward to seeing you in the black hole of real estate.